footage has emerged on social media of a new tactic Ukrainian drone pilots are using to kill Russian armor, even tanks protected with a so-called cope cage. Moscow has lost an estimated 3,000 pieces of armor in Ukraine, from tanks to armored personnel carriers. Many of them have been destroyed by relatively cheap first-person view, or FPV, drones costing just a few hundred dollars. Footage from the Russian MOD recently showed T-80 main battle tanks rolling off the production line, fitted with metal shields above their turrets, a device known as a cope cage, to try to protect them from FPV drones. Russian tank crews have even resorted to installing log walls around the cage in an attempt to offer even more protection from a side-on attack. But video on social media claims to show how Ukrainian drones are getting around it, by hitting the tanks with a double-tap technique. In the footage, what's claimed to be a Soviet-era T-64BV tank, is singled out by a pair of Ukrainian kamikaze drones, as it speeds along a dirt track near Bilohorivka on the eastern front. The footage is grainy, but it appears as if the tank's entire turret is encased in either netting or wire mesh. Theoretically these shrouds will trigger the drone's warhead slightly away from the hull, reducing the damage, or in a best-case scenario catch the drone, stopping it from exploding at all. On this occasion though neither of those things happened. The first drone targets the side of the turret, and its two fuse activators the wire spears poking out the front of the drone, can be clearly seen as it flies in and detonates. It is hard to tell from the footage, but the T-64 does not appear to be carrying any external jamming equipment like the RP-377, a portable jammer that the Russian military developed to scramble enemy communications and protect vehicles from FPV drones. These are now factory fitted to some vehicles like the T-80 BVM tank, but the Ukrainians have developed new drones, fitted with automatic lock-on, to counter jamming. These allow the UAV to fly to the target even if it loses radio connection with the operator. In the footage, the first drone appears to soften up the target, peeling back the cage, before a second slams into the same part of the turret. The second drone appears to be carrying a rocket-propelled grenade, most likely a Russian-made PG-7VL high-explosive anti-tank heat round. The RPG's 2.6 kilos shaped charge punches its way into the hull, setting off a catastrophic explosion. The T-64 was the first Soviet-era tank to be fitted with an autoloader, a system to increase the tank's rate of fire. Rounds are stored in a carousel on the hull floor and automatically fed into the tank's gun. This means the T-64 can move and fire at a much faster rate 5 to 8 rounds a minute, but with so much high explosive stored beneath the turret, it also makes it hugely vulnerable to top-down attacks, something Ukrainian FPV pilots clearly know very well. Russia continues to suffer large losses of troops and equipment, including artillery systems and armored personnel vehicles APVs, according to Kiev's latest figures. Ukraine's general staff said on Saturday that over the previous 24 hours Russian casualties totaled 1,124, the highest figure for six weeks. The last time it was higher was on March 16, when the figure was 1,160. Russian forces also lost 38 artillery systems the second highest figure for a week, taking the total losses of this equipment type to 11,905 since the start of the war. Kyiv's latest figures also showed that Russia had lost 14 APVs the previous day, taking the total for the full-scale invasion to 13,971. Ukraine has estimated that Russia has lost 465,054 troops during the war, with this figure including both dead and wounded. An accurate number of casualties is difficult to ascertain with Ukraine's estimate higher than figures given by Western countries. Britain's Ministry of Defense said in February that Russian losses had reached around 350,000. A tally conducted by independent Russian media outlet Mediazona 
and BBC Russian based on publicly available information, said that as of Saturday, at least 51,679 members of the Russian military had died. The outlets say that their tallies offer only a partial picture and do not encompass the full scope of the casualties. Among the losses were 3,300 Army and other Security Forces officers, 390 who had the rank of Lieutenant Colonel and above. It comes as Ukraine awaits the delivery of weapons and ammunition following the passage by Congress of a $61 billion assistance package in the hope of stemming Russian advances in the Donetsk region, particularly north of Avdivka. Kyiv has warned that Vladimir Putin hopes to capture the nearby town of Chasiv Yar in time for Victory Day on May 9, when Russia marks the role Moscow played in defeating Nazi Germany in World War II. Amid concerns that the aid package may not be enough for Kyiv to achieve all its war aims and regain all its territory, U.S. officials have reportedly resumed discussing freezing the lines in the war, according to the Institute for the Study of War (ISW). The think tank said Friday that Ukrainian forces will first have to leverage Washington's aid to stabilize the front lines and stop ongoing Russian advances, particularly in the Avdivka and Chasiv Yar directions. A Russian offensive is anticipated in summer, but its scale remains unclear, the think tank said adding that Moscow may be assessing its plans to take into account better equipped Ukrainian forces. Let's go! Let's go!